Tomorrow, you're photographing a wedding, your first ever wedding. And with a wedding, you can't mess it up. However, you have no idea what the venue is gonna be like. Is there gonna be lots of natural light? Maybe, maybe not. Is it gonna be bad weather and we're gonna be indoors for a lot of the day? Or is it gonna be really sunny and we're gonna be outdoors? Is the venue a big open space or is it really, really tight? Not knowing what tomorrow is gonna give you is a fairly common thing within wedding photography. Sometimes the only images that we see of a wedding venue are those on Google Images. And we'll probably never see what the prep locations are like where the bride and groom are getting ready until we actually get there. But you need to be able to own it. You need to be able to walk into the room, fill everybody with reassurance and confidence, especially the bride. And to be able to provide and show that confidence, we have to have confidence in the tools that we're using. So what lenses do you take with you? What lenses do you invest with to make sure you're covered for all eventualities? First thoughts would be a 16 to 35, a 24 to 70, and a 70 to 200. Problem solved, right? And with zoom lenses, we generally have two different versions. We have the F4, which is much more affordable, and then we have the much more expensive F2.8 version. And back in the day, I had just shy of four and a half thousand pounds worth of lenses hanging by my side. And if we are strictly speaking about wedding photography, that was the biggest regret of my career. Why? Well, sure, them two lenses cover pretty much everything that you'll need in terms of focal length for a wedding. But first off, they're very big. They're very heavy. But unfortunately, there was one wedding that I did in particular where it was fairly dark on the day. The venue itself didn't have that much natural light. It was a bit of a rough day outside with the weather and the photos turned out lovely, but I was taking photos with the much longer shutter speed that I actually wanted and the ISO was much higher on the camera. So I did one very simple thing. I changed my lenses and my whole wedding photography career changed and I'll never ever look back. The first lens I bought was this lens, the 85mm f1.8. This one lens takes care of my telephoto range from my previous setup. Sure, it's not quite 135mm prime, but when I actually looked at the photos and looked to see what focal length I was using from my 70-200, to I never went past that 135mm mark. And if I need tighter framing than what my 85mm provides, I just simply move closer or crop more in post. Whereas if you have 135 millimeter, it's not like you can zoom out and you may not be able to move further away from the subject you're taking a photo of. And the 85 millimeter, if you've never used it, is the portrait lens, and I mean the portrait lens. All of my most favorite wedding photos that I've ever taken has been taken with this one lens. The 85 millimeter that I'm using is just the Sony 85 millimeter f1.8. It gives me sharp images, it's faster focus, the bokeh looks really nice, but obviously this will differ depending on what 85 millimeter you buy. However, there is one thing that I would change about this lens. I wish it was f1.4, but only for that extra bit of light if I need it, because generally speaking, I don't shoot wide open all of the time. But the best thing about this lens is that it cost me around about 700 pounds. So to pair with my 85 millimeter, I need something a little wider. And there's two lenses that I would consider buying. Sticking with the theme of prime lenses, I would either go for a 24 millimeter or a 35 millimeter. I own the 35 millimeter and my business partner owns a 24 millimeter. There are some situations I find myself in where I think a 35 just isn't wide enough, but also a 24 millimeter to get the framing that I want, I feel like I have to be much closer to the subject, where with weddings, I prefer to be a little bit more out of the way. The 35 millimeter that I use is the Sony G Master F1.4. Again, I don't shoot wide open all of the time. The reason I have a 1.4 is the same reason I'd like a 1.4 for this, just for that extra bit of light should I need it. But for a long time, up until maybe about six to eight weeks ago, I was actually using the 35 1.8. And that thing was great. Compare it to the 1.4, which is like a thousand pound more, you're not actually getting that much more for your money. Personally, I think you could put the photos side by side and both of them would look great. And if you want to see a video comparing the two, then I'll leave a link up here if you want to watch that. And again, if you want to buy a 35 mm f1.8, you can probably pick one up for around about six to 700 pound and a lot cheaper secondhand. Just sold mine for 350. So now between these two lenses, I can cover pretty much 98% of a wedding day. 
The ones that I struggle with are the dance floor photos, the big family group photos, especially when you have the whole wedding party there, the big dining room photos that all the couples seem to like. So just to be safe, I do take a third lens with me and that's the lens I'm using right now to film this video, the 16 to 35. I own the F2.8 version, but the whole reason I bought the F2.8 version isn't because of wedding photography. And if I'm honest, if you wanted to get a wide zoom, get a 16 35 by all means, but I'd probably say get the F4 version and save your money. Dance floor photos when you're using a flash, big room photos, big group photos, you probably wanna be shooting F4, maybe even F8 to make sure that everything is in focus. So therefore, spending that extra money to buy an F2.8 zoom lens isn't always necessary. However, if you're wanting to stick with the theme of primes, I'd probably get something like a 20 mm f1.8. And by getting a 20 mm f1.8, you are in the right focal range to be able to get the wide photos, but you also have the benefits of having a really low aperture in them low light situations if you are in a tight space for any of your prep. Now there are a huge variety of different lenses within these focal ranges that you can buy, especially if you start to consider third party manufacturers such as Sigma or Tamron. Obviously lenses from some manufacturers may perform better or worse than other manufacturers, but this normally comes down to the speed or autofocus or even the actual look of the bokeh or the vignette. And all of that, apart from the autofocus situation, is all subjective. Meaning that there's no right or wrong, it entirely depends on what suits your style. But shooting on prime lenses rather than zoom lenses definitely changed the way I take any of my photos. Not only from a technical perspective, but also the feel of the photos and enjoying taking the photos. And you could definitely buy these two lenses if this was f1.8, not f1.4, or maybe even a third prime lens for the same price of what you would pay for a main brand f2.8 zoom. Therefore, you can save your money or you invest it elsewhere in your business to further enhance your photography career. If you want to pick up any of the lenses that I recommend for any of my setup, then I'll leave a link down in the description box below. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe. If you do, I'll see you right there in the next one. Later.